Well, let's take a look at the temperatures. A lot of people have been asking, is this the coldest ever that we have ever seen? I actually took this morning's lows, and you know how frigid they are, and compared them to the record for just this day. And you can tell we're not even close. So, no, it is not the coldest it has ever been. One below. So, definitely a big shift in the pattern here. Very atypical in comparison to what we should be seeing. All this cold air that's spreading is now going to be spreading even farther into the northeast by tomorrow. And even more unusual is we're going to be talking about a threat for winter weather all the way down to the deep south overnight in through tomorrow. I mean, this is something so atypical. They haven't even seen this in about three years. So I'm going to get that and dive a little bit deeper into this coming up in a few minutes, guys. Dangerous cold we're looking at. Even. My God. Freezing rain in the south. Thanks so much. Sure. All right, we now know we are. I mean, that's the thing. We're all complaining right now with negative 30 wind chills, but this isn't even the big story today. Down into the deep south, not just kind of the south, the deep south, places like New Orleans can be talking about several inches of snow by tomorrow morning. This is so atypical, and I want you to know they don't know if they're going to get a lot of snow or a lot of ice. Very tricky when you talk about that cold air moving that far south. I want to take you back and kind of explain why. So we know we have all that cold air. It's trying to go as far as it can, and there's a lot of moisture down there. But depending on how far south that cold air goes, the type of weather they get completely changes. Back to the basics. You have warm air, of course, right across the Gulf. You have cold air when it overrides it. Depending on how far that cold air goes in, the warmer it is, you're going to get rain all the way. The colder it is, you're going to get snow all the way. Somewhere in between, you're going to get freezing rain or sleet. Why does this matter? Let's talk about this. Now, keep in mind, half an inch of rain is five inches of snow. So if it's completely cold, they're going to get a half an inch of freezing rain. That means power lines are coming down. That means they're going to be shut out for the next several days. And you go, great, let's give them snow. Five inches of snow in the southeast, they don't know what to do with that either. They probably don't have the equipment for that. So what they're hoping for is sleet. We don't really know what they're going to get. And, of course, they have no way to prepare. They have to prepare for both. Either way, this is coming overnight tonight. It hasn't happened in three years. Just prepare for everything. You stay inside as much as you can. Exactly. Thanks, Andrew. My goodness. Yeah, you know, and the CFO, the chief financial officer of Procter & Gamble, said on the call that, yeah, it was this Movember movement that flat a Hollywood star. And that is a trend that is changing here for some of the big razor companies. And changing cultures at work probably allow that. Because I, I, I would assume. And it's, you know, you've got tattoos, lots of facial hair. All of this is really, uh, uh, really acceptable. Are, are again, you're not... talking about the men. and the mo So Movember was this, uh, in the month of November, it was this nationwide movement to not shave. Uh, to raise awareness for prostate cancer. Four million, at least four million men around the world do not shave it's razor blades. You know it. Huh? Economize on their razor blades. That's a very good point. Taking better picture. care of them. The it is a growth market, the Procter & Gamble. <laughs> We Manscaping have, like, is on, still on Chris's face. We talked about Manscaping's this. on the rise. That's a big. I respect that. That's a big growth market for. Um, I was surprised by that. We did a little normal. And <laughs> kudos to Leonardo DiCaprio for embracing that because I'm sure that is the last. This Indra Peterson's watching it all. Yeah. Once again, we're talking about wind chills this morning that are deadly. Look how dangerous these are. And if you're in Chicago this morning, it feels like 20 below, almost 40 below in Minneapolis this morning. And that's not where this cold air ends. Today, it's expected to make its way all the way down to the deep south and then by tomorrow into the Northeast. All right, welcome back. Another day, another warning mm -hmm. about the Sochi Olympics, and they're beginning to take their toll. Some Olympic athletes are telling their family members to stay home, while others are braving the trip to support their loved ones. So we wanted to bring together a panel of guests who have family members preparing to compete uh, in Sochi and discuss some of the real concerns facing athletes and fans. Let's bring in all of our guests. You see them right here. Sequoia Mount via Skype later in the sh li a little later um, in the next in the next uh, in, in a few minutes from Luxembourg where he's training. And also, guys, thank you all for being here. First, though, let's kind of set the stage of where things stand. So let's bring in CNN senior international correspondent Ivan Watson, who is live on the ground in Sochi for us again this morning. Now, Chris and Kate, uh, the Russians have also brought in 400 uh, Cossacks wearing fur hats and swords to help protect the games. And right off the coast... Very much. You know, it's interesting. You look at it two ways. Uh, the more we talk about the threat, the more that keeps that getting added to the preparations, the more the U.S. is getting involved. Is that supposed to make you feel more safe? Or to you, too, because you've got families involved here. You're making decisions for yourself. So, Sequoia, let me start with you. Uh, your daughter's on the bobsled team. They had a big win, finished second, beat Canada. Where's your head on this? family self in harm's way but at that point their security um, plan and though as you start looking into going he's a competitor it's very important um, out for us being there and, and he just immediately said yes not because of him race this happening in the region and, and traveled with him to the 2010 yes winter Olymp winter yeah. games in vancouver this is a very different situation obviously what yeah. are your big questions and concerns uh i, I the stereo you know you're just creating hype <laughs> 
has there to know that the government is thinking about it um secure and uh sort of they are um and they're the communications plan much more to discuss in the security situation sequoia and some of your concerns as well but let's take just a quick moment and get over to michaela we've been looking at there's been a lot of reaction on social media surrounding the sochi olympics and Welcome back to New Day once again. We're continuing our discussion with family members of Olympic athletes who have some very serious and real concerns about safety in Sochi leading up to the Games, just 11 days away now, of course. All right, so let's bring in Roberto Carcelin. He is a cross-country skier competing in Sochi for the Peruvian team. Roberto joins us via Skype from Luxembourg. He's still getting in some final race prep before he goes here. We have his wife, Kate, with us, joining us on the panel. Roberto, can you hear us? Perfectly, Chris. Hello. So give us the perspective of somebody who has to go there and compete, what assurances you've been given, the level of anxiety that you see uh, from the athlete's perspective and what it means in terms of how you feel about your family. Perfect um, environment for terrorist groups to, uh, to let their voices here. So we feel like um, it's a little bit stressful. Um, it was a really hard decision for us as a family just to not to come. I'm going to be up training in, in the month. That are lingering. I mean, I know obviously there's a lot of communication with um, the Olympic Organizing Committee, but do you have any specific concerns still? Because you're about to head to Sochi. Uh, well, uh, as, a, as an athlete, yes. I don't know what to expect. Um, it's a little bit of... Um, the host country, part of that is just the logistic problems that you're talking about the threat there in this. Uh, you had to make a decision about whether or not to go. Uh, you're monitoring the coverage as well. Do you see this being uh, addressed? I think there are definitely, you know, what I do believe the athletes would be safe and not feel comfortable being in a foreign country, not knowing the language. That has to, that uncertainty has to be something that you and your family weighed in your decision to, to attend the games. But I also know that you have some specific concerns and questions still before you head over. What are those specific concerns? Well, of course, we've streamlined our activity, you know, the train system, uh, but I want to make sure that it's not a target for the terrorists and just knowing all the different transportation systems so that we can pick and choose a little more carefully and then making sure that there's security at the airport and Ivan, uh, you know the question here uh from sequoia one of the mothers of uh, the logistics uh who's on the ground to help us know where to get and when using all these attendant services like this transit what are you part of the security planning is there a dovetail you know are those kinds of resources in place for the families and visitors as they get there Chris, I gotta say, I've been coming to Russia for 15 years. That Russia is typically known for. Uh, as far as other logistics, the trains and so on, uh, there is a lot of controversy swirling around these. Fran, I, when, what I've been saying is very interesting. I know it kind of makes you smirk when friendly and kind and, you know, those are not generally words right. you describe when you come across Russian security forces. But do you think that is something that visitors can take comfort in? The fact that Russia understands the rating factor here right that's exactly right and it's been an aggravating on our own you know the other thing to smile about but that's part of now kind of the call you just pointed out the, to the mess yes. with the rest oh, of yeah. us okay. uh will they allow the u.s access in any type of exigent circumstance any kind of emergency given that that'll be an issue and let's not forget these olympics are where they are because putin wanted to send a message that he is in control of his environment there how is that message received uh, roberto there is roberto still with us Yes, I'm here. Opera his family in these situations. Your husband. No, I just, I mean, of course, love you, baby. I mean, we're on Skype every day. So, <laughs> good. <laughs> so old I news. see him a lot. Old news, but no. Uh, uh, good luck, sweetie. And. Uh... Yep, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Determine and focus. Yes. That's what we like to see <laughs> yes. in our Olympic athletes. Roberto, thank you so much. Kate and Sequoia, thank you so very much. And LZ and Fran, thank you as always. Thank you. All right. Michaela? Great to go beyond just stuff. We, had to, we thought you had to know. Fascinating. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Michaela. So you probably noticed this, or maybe you didn't, but I'll ask it anyway. Did you notice who was not at last night's Grammy Awards? Trouble. Talk about all the latest. Pamela Brown is here with the very, very latest. So where do things stand? Well, so much for him laying low after a legal limit for drivers under the age of 21. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that is a factor. And then also we're learning California and that's still lingering for Which the consequences of that could be much more severe. So, of course, in some ways, you know, um, that is a bigger deal. Oddly enough. For that reason for him. Yeah. Low, which He's might be not. the best advice for him at this very moment. Yeah, Pamela, absolutely. thanks so much. Thank you. We'll keep following it. Thanks. Yep. Chris? 
just Indra Peterson's with the very latest on what to expect. It seems like the danger has returned again today, Kate. We're talking about temperatures this morning that feel like they were almost 40 below. Of course, that's Minnesota. Once again, seeing Minneapolis now almost 38 below, Fargo 36 below. But it's not just in the upper Midwest. We're talking about this cold air really spreading into the Ohio Valley today down to the southeast, even the deep south, and by tomorrow into the northeast. Thank you so much, Michaela. Now to a truly amazing story of survival. We first showed you this footage over the summer, and it is very difficult. A long load, a long road ahead. I guess that's kind of... I mean, I have setbacks, but for the most part, I'm on that. I mean, I can't even believe that. Talk me through where you were and where you're headed in terms of your physical recovery right now. Uh, I mean, I went from have like a lot of mobility well, here in the studio for very good reason. This happened in July. That doesn't. That might seem like a long time ago for some of us. For some of us, but that is basically no time at all when you're talking about what you went through. And for that reason, you've never seen the video. You never want to see the video, and we've been very careful about yeah. that. Day though, do you remember? I remember a lot. I don't. I don't like thinking about it. I have really bad night. Right? Yeah. I mean, and I think when we sit here, I am in awe of Alexis, <laughs> mom and dad, and yeah. I know you are on a constant basis. You're smiling. You're here. You're <laughs> present. You have such an amazing outlook and perspective. Thank Where does you. she get this? Strong girl. Where would you ever believe you would be here today in no. in January? Not at all. These were these were injuries that people don't yeah. don't survive, right? I mean, in a sense, I think I learned to deal with a lot of stuff. And all it was was an innocent, innocent day. Parasailing is something us would say we have all done at one point or another. We were on. Do you want to speak out? Where does this come from for you? Now is a nightmare. Is what we want to pursue. And you guys, you're, you're. You're so strong, and you put on such a good face, but I don't do. Yeah, but like when you see other people. Heads look like for you. And the family speaking out, as painful as it is, because they don't want this to happen to another family. And there's a lawsuit against this parasailing company. And after, after, I haven't heard anything really from the parasailing company at all, but they did release a statement. I know you guys are all well, well aware of it. And part of it, they said that the, that the company practice, uh, it, it will it will adhere to best practices to minimize the risk associated with water sport activities sudden weather conditions can and do occur talk to me about the lawsuit though what's in it all right horrible weather conditions and it wasn't sudden and off throughout the day the girls were actually those ominous skies behind that it's not about the money no what is it about very easily happened here and yeah. one thing we can be thankful for is that you're able to sit here today yeah. you are an inspiration with your strength and your fortitude and your ability to find the strength within you to keep on keeping on every day thank you thank you alexis <laughs> yeah. and, and thank thanks you. debbie chris